how do how do you think your your teammates and yourself responded from that game Monday night to getting back to work? I think they responded just the same way that they responded every week. You know, I, um, the results aren't aren't the thing. Like I said before, it's the process. Um, guys played hard. You know, you go you go in Monday regardless. Win. I mean, on Tuesday, I guess. Well, it was Wednesday. Um, win, lose, or draw. You correct the mistakes that can be corrected, um, and you get back to the drawing board and you focus on the next opponent. Um, and that's what we were able to do. I think everybody responded the same way they responded to wins. You know, you get to to deal with it for you know 24 hours, and then you move forward and you get ready for the next opponent. Your uh, your lobbying efforts to get Kwan Williams in the Pro Bowl ballot paid off. So did what, they? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. So what um, just what makes him like? Why has he been so valuable and, and productive this season? Well, K is just so dynamic. Um, in every phase, um, if you if you just look at him as a, in, as his pass rushing ability and it's in his own, it's outstanding. Um, if you look at him in terms of just coverage ability, it's outstanding. If you look at him in st- terms of run fitting, it's outstanding. Um, and so he just brings the complete package um, of playmaking ability, and I think that that supersedes position. Uh, I think that his playmaking ability is, is what allows our defense to go, you know, along, along with other unheralded guys like, like DJ Jones. Um, obviously, Eric is getting the respect he deserves now, but, but Tart and what Jimmy are able to do to limit the big plays um, goes a long way. But he's a huge playmaker for us, and that's what allow, allows us to, to play the type of defense we do. We do. How did you view the way the defense played Monday night? Obviously not the outcome you wanted, but a couple takeaways and seemed to contain Russell pretty well, and, and especially in light of the challenges ahead with a lot of great quarterbacks on your schedule coming well, up. Well, we expect to play well. Um, you know, we, we, we gave up some plays we shouldn't have um, in some backed up, sudden change situations, you know, the plays we wanted back um, where we felt like we could have got some stops and, and uh, you know, kind of mitigated the situation. Um, but overall, you know, we made them, you know, when we had, we had a long field for them to deal with, I don't think they were very successful. Um, and that's what we pride ourselves on, you know, making them, making them take the long ride um, and being able to get stops and make plays. And, and you had a ton of guys all over the place. Um, K1, a huge part of it. Fred, huge part of it. Um, Eric Armstead had a huge impact day. Defoe, um, obviously Bosa and D4, everybody had, had their hand in it. Um, Greenlaw, Greenlaw made an outstanding play in overtime. And that's what you need. That's what you need in those kind of games and those kind of situations. You need guys to step up and make plays, and we did. Kind of also was saying the other day that he was supposed to be playing Xbox with Fred Warner, but Fred wouldn't leave the facility to, to do that. What, 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 have you seen, what have you seen from Fred in terms of work ethic, and how does that translate in terms of guys respecting him right away? Oh, I, I, well, most it, he works hard, and he plays hard, and he plays at a high level. I, I mean, at the end of the day, you get respect for that. You get respect for how you play on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. Um, and he plays at a high level. He has a lot of pressure on his shoulders with – with the green dot and being, being forced to call the plays and deal with um, that pressure. Um, but he does a phenomenal job of, of, you know, making impact week in, week out, getting guys aligned, getting guys um, shifted when, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of checks and things on his shoulders and he makes everything happen. So um, that's, that is a testament to his hard work and dedication. I think the entire defense respects him um, and respects what he's able to do. Did you see more electricity from him in this last game from, from Fred? Uh, it seemed like he, he might have been trying to, you know, channel uh, Quan a little bit in that game. Uh, I don't think he I don't think he did anything different than what he normally does. He he was playing really hard and um, he he did he was very fiery throughout the game, um, but I don't think it was him trying to channel anything. Uh, I think it was just him, you know, knowing how big the game was and big the moment was and and playing as hard as he could and it just showed. Any particular memories playing against Larry Fitzgerald and, and any thoughts on potentially facing him for the last time? Well, I hope not, man. Larry Larry means a lot to this game, and the game will be worse um, if he's not in it. Um, but obviously he's, he's, done a, he's had a tremendous um, career and made a huge impact um, through generations, I'm sure. I'm sure he's played somebody's father and also played their sons. You know, he's, he's played that long. I don't know, what is this, 16 for him, 15? Um, but he's he's done a great job throughout his career, just being a consummate professional, um, being dedicated, being committed, being a hardworking, being a, a great sportsman on the field, uh, and a guy who who gives back to the community. Um, there aren't a, enough positive things to say about Larry. 
um, and the way he plays the game. So the game will miss him if he's gone. But um, it's just been an honor to be able to compete against him year in and year out. What's your reaction to what's your reaction to the chatter on social media or elsewhere that you guys would have been better off playing for a tie in overtime? <laughs> um, I I mean that's coming from people who don't know ball. If I'm being honest, um, and you get to the point where where you got armchair. You know, quarterbacks, armchair GMs, armchair coaches, like, oh man, I would have done this, and that's that's why you're sitting on the couch and not in in this sport as a professional. Um, you got people who who don't do this for a living talking about what they would have done. And it's cool for for I guess social media chatter is great for there, but as as you know, people who play the game and who who put the sacrifice in, who go out there and lay their bodies on the line, you don't play for a tie. Would it be a scenario like that? And could you imagine what the reaction would be if that was the direction from the coaching staff? It wouldn't be great. I mean, if it was the last uh, stitched effort and, and you're backed up on your two-yard line with a minute to go and you just don't have a choice, then cool, you know, nobody would concern. But if you have a chance to, to drive the ball down the field and, and try to win the game, then I, I would think everybody would want us to try to win the game. You know, you don't want to tie. Sorry. I, Oh, oh, well, this was getting back to Larry Fitzgerald stuff, but does he do enough where he's drawing coverage away from Christian Kirk because Kirk is coming off a big game, or is it just their offense is spread out enough and Kyler can pick his spots whichever way he wants to go? Well, I, I, I think um, they just spread it out. You know, they don't, they don't, you know, that's why each game somebody else is having a big game. You know, he just gets the ball to whoever he, you know, whoever's a hot hand that week. Um, but um, I think, I don't think we're focused on anybody. We'll just cover them as they come. Advantages of playing a team twice in a span of what, less than three weeks. Well, it's just your familiarity. Um, it's just seeing the same look. Um, it's it's having a chance to to. We played them on a short week, and now we'll get you know extended look at them. And so you know, I'm sure they'll feel the same way, familiar with the concepts, and um, they'll put some new wrinkles in. But um, it's just familiar familiarity with one another, and and knowing some of the concepts and some of the things they they like to do. Do you use that late touchdown they had as motivation going into this week? Um, yeah, yeah, we, we definitely have something on our minds. Um, you know, we, 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 we didn't feel like we played up to our abilities in that game, so we look forward to, to the challenge this week. I'm not sure if it was liquid courage or just plain stupidity, but I'm just wondering what your take is on somebody going into facing Joe Montana's statue outside of the stadium. I, I, I literally just saw something on social media about that. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's one of the more classic classless acts that you you'll see you know regardless of who your team is and and who you cheer for you don't you don't vandalize and deface um statues of li living le i mean legends you know these guys are legendary they put the work in these guys didn't do anything that statue didn't do anything to you um so you know hopefully they caught the culprit and you know they get you know they're just due no, they got it. oh good 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 <laughs> thank, thank you, you.